Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 54. For the last three days, day number 51, 52, and 53, we had been learning how to multiply, how to multiply and divide fractions. On day number 51 and 52, we learned how to multiply and divide fractions. And yesterday, on day number 53, we learned these concepts, the concept of quotient, dividend, divisor, and remainder. Today, we're going to do, some, do something different. Today, we're going to learn how to, how to multiply and divide, not the fractions, but rather something re related to fractions, how to multiply and divide decimals. How to multiply and divide decimals. Let's look at the first example. First one we have is 7.53 times 0.4. 7.53 times 0.4. Now listen, listen very carefully, pay attention here. The exams that you're preparing for, the test that you're preparing for, presumably, is one of these tests here, SAT, SAT, TES, GMAT, or GRE, or something similar to it. All of these tests are multiple choice test exams. They are all of, they are, all of them are multiple choice tests. Listen, as I said, listen carefully. And because of the fact that they are multiple choice tests, not always, what I'm about to say is not true all the time, but in many cases, you can get away with simply making an estimate. As long as you know how to make a decent estimate, you can most of the time spot the right answer without actually having to do all the nitty gritty details. You don't have to find the exact answer. In a lot of the times, you can just get away by doing uh, making an estimate as long as it's a decent estimate. For example, here, 7.53 times 0.4. Well, 7.53, I'm going to pretend is 750. 750 times 4. 750 times 4. If you double 750, if you want to, if you have to multiply something by 4, just double it and then double the result. If you double 750, 750. If you double it, is 1500. And if you double 1500, is 3000. So we end up 750 times 4 is 3000. What do we do next? Well, this one has a de one decimal place, this one has one decimal place, and this one has uh, two decimal places, which means we have our final answer, whatever it is, our final answer, whatever it is, which was 3000, with the decimal place right here, it's like this, we have to take our decimal place and move it three places, one, two, and three. The correct answer, whatever it is, the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be around three. It's going to be around three. So if you find one answer that's pretty close to three, that's your answer. Now the next thing is, the next thing, what, you, what if you find two answer choices that are both close to, very close to three, one of, one, of, one of the two answer choices is a little bit more than three, the other one is a little bit less than three. This is where it comes in handy, this is where it pays, it, it pays dividend, this is where it pay, uh, pays you the, the, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the reward for knowing whether you are underestimating or or estimating. Estimating is fine. Est estimating is just fine. As a matter of fact, you should be estimating in the exams. Go ahead and estimate whenever you can, as long as at all time, at all time, you're fully cognizant of whether you are underestimating or overestimating. Here, the correct, we don't have 750, we have 753. We have 753. So the correct answer is not going to be 3, the correct answer is going to be something more than 3. Something more than 3, this is how we write it, something a little bit more than 3. We write something more than 3 as 3 with a plus sign on top. Correct answer, whatever, the, whatever it is, is something more than 3. Let's do, let's, let's do the work and find out the exact answer. We don't actually have to put in any effort. We, we had a 750 times 4, now what we left over is 3 times 4, which is 12. So it's not going to be 3, it's, it's not going to be 3000. It's going to be 3012. The answer is going to be 3.012. 3.012 because we left out the 12. 3 times 4 is 12. This is the part we left out. Let's do it. I'm going to show you here. So what you do is this. 753 times 4. And for the time being, we, we ignore our decimal places. We, we insert the decimal places at the very end. 3 times 4 is 12. That's the, that's the 12 we had left out. That's the 12 we had ignored when we multiply 750 by 4. 5 times 4 is 20, 20 plus 1 is 21, there is your 12. And then 21, carry 2, and 7 fours are 28, 28 plus 2 is 30. This one has a decimal place right here, it has two decimal places, 1 and 2, 
and 0.4 is right here, it has one decimal place. So we have to take our decimal place, which is right here for right now, and move it three places. Move it three places. One, two, and three, right here. It ends up with here. The final answer is 3.012. 3.012. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. This time, this time when I put the problem on the blackboard, I want you to sit there and actually I actually estimate it yourself first. Give me an estimate before you actually do the work. Here's, here's the problem. The problem as it appeared in the exam, the problem as it appeared in the exam was like this. It says find the volume, find the volume of a rectangular box that is 12.7 cm by 6 cm by 4.08 cm. Well, first of all, what is a rectangular box? A rectangular box is exactly what it says. A rectangular box is simply a three-dimensional box, a three-dimensional rectangle. A rectangular box is simply a three-dimensional rectangle. You draw your rectangle, you draw your any old rectangle, and you give us the third dimension. Let's give it a third dimension. Let's, let's give it a depth. And here's your here's your rectangular box. We are told that one side is 4.08 centimeter. We are told the other side is 6 centimeter. And we are told that this side is 12.7 centimeter. And the question is, what is going to be, what is going to be the volume of this box? Well, how do we find a volume of a rectangular box? It's simply length times width times height. Length times width times height. Essentially, what they are doing here, essentially what they are asking here, is to multiply three decimals. That's all it is. Hence, hence multiplying decimals. It is a geometric problem, but essentially that's what they're asking here, how to multiply three decimals. Let's do it here. We don't need any of this thing. We already learned all of this yesterday. Uh, we learned what is the quotient, what is the dividend, what is the divisor, what is the remainder in, in the form. We don't need it anymore. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to first give me a quick estimate. Here's how we do the quick estimate. I see a 6 and I see a 4. 6 times 4 is 24. And what are we supposed to do with 24? We are supposed to multiply it by 12.7. We are supposed to multiply it by 12.7. Let's multiply it by 12 first. Let's multiply it by 12, okay? We're going to multiply 24 by 12. And we're not going to do it in a, in a baby way. We're not going to do it in a baby step. We're just going to multiply 24 by 12 because we know our 12 is stable. We learned our time table 1 through 12. If you have watched the earlier videos, I, I told you that you must know your time tables 1 through 12. 12 fours are 48. 12 fours are 48. 8? Carry 4. 12 twos are 24. 22 times 2 times 12 is 24. 24 plus 4 is going to be 28. 28. That's so far so good. Now, you can leave it there like this if you wanted to, or you can make it a little bit of refinement. What we have done is we have multiplied the 24, we have multiplied the 24 by 12, but we left out 0.7. Okay, listen carefully, we left out 0.7. I'm going to pretend, I'm going to pretend that 12 point, I'm going to pretend just to make it our life simpler, instead of, instead of 12.7, we're going to pretend that it is actually 12.75. Why? Because 12.75 is very easy to number, number to deal with. Essentially, we have to figure out the three-quarter. Essentially, we have to figure out the three-quarter of 24 because we are multiplying it by 24. So three-quarter, three-quarters of 24 is what we have to add to it because we already did 12, 24 times 12. Now we are doing 0.75 part. Even though it's 0.7, we are pretending it's 0.75. 0.75 is three-quarter. So we have to find three-quarter of 24, which is very easy. Divide top and bottom by four. We get a six. Three, three times six is 18. We need to add 18 to it. We need to add 18 to it, and that's our refinement. Otherwise, your answer is going to be too far off. 288 plus 18, 288 plus 20, 288 plus 20. Listen carefully. 288 plus 20 would have been 288 plus 10 is 298. 298 plus 10 is 308. So it's going to be 306. The answer is going to be approximately 306. Answer is going to be approximately 306. 
Let's see what we find actually. Let's see what we find actually. Now is that an underestimation or overestimation? You have to know that. The final answer is going to be a little bit more than that or a little bit less than that. The final answer should be a little bit more than that. This is, this is, an, this is, an, this is an underestimation. The final answer is going to be something more than 306. Why? <coughs> Excuse me. Why? Because we did take care of this 0.7 part in our way, in a lazy way, by pretending it's 3 quarter, but we left out this 0 0.08 part. We multiplied it by 4, we multiplied 6 by 4, we are supposed to multiply 6 by 4.08. And had we done that, this answer would have been bigger and the whole thing would have been bigger. The correct answer is going to be something more than 306. So if it's a multiple choice exam, and if you find one answer choice that's just slightly more than 306, that's your answer. You don't have to actually do out all the work. Do you understand? Let's do it together. We need the room, so we, I'm going to raise everything 12.7 times 6 uh, times 4.08. Let's do 12.7, 12.7, which is 127 times 4.08, 408. Okay, let's do it together. You must know your tables. You must know your tables by heart. 7 eighths are. 7 8 are 7, 7 is a 49. I know 7, 7, 7, 7 is a 49 because 7, I know my squares. 7 squared is 49. 7 squared means 7 7. We don't have 7 7, we have 8 7. I'm good, just going to add one more 7 to so 4, 49. 49 plus 1 is 50, 50 plus 6 is 56. 6 carry 5. You see how you do it? If you don't know what 7 8s are, just go around around about with 7 7, I know 7 7 is a 49. 49 plus 7, I, I chopped up the 7 into a 1 and a 6. 49 plus 1 is 50, and 50 plus 6 is 56. 8 to the 16, 16 plus 5 is 21, 1, 32. I'm going to do it a little bit. We have still enough room on the top. On the top, I'm going to read one more row, because when we start dealing with it, I'm going to do, do it a little bit lower. I, I might need more room. 127 times 408. And you will see why in a second. 7 8, 7 8 is a 56, 6, carry 5, 8 to the 16, 16 plus 5 is 21, 1, carry 2, 8 plus 1 is 10. Now we multiply by 0, or when we multiply by 0, we're going to get a whole bunch of 0. We don't have to waste our time, just put another holder for the 0. And now do 4 times 7, 4 7s are 28, 8, carry 2, carry 2. You see how I did it? Cross out the 5 and put down 2 so that you don't forget what you're carrying. 4 2 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 0, carry 1. 4 1 is 1, plus 1 is 5. So that's it, that part is done. 6, 1, 8, 1, and 5. What do we have to do next? Now we have to multiply it by 6. Now we have to multiply it by 6 because that was the third dimension. So we are almost done. 6, but you see how long it's taking? Just estimate it, like we did here. 6, 6 are 36. 6, carry 3, 6 plus 3 is 9, 8, 6 is a 48, 8, carry 4, 6, 6, 1 is a 6, plus 4 is 10, 1, carry 1, 6, 5 is a 30, plus 1 is 31. What do you know? What do we do now? What we have to do now is to go back and add our decimal. This was 12.7, so there is one decimal place here. This one was 4.08, there are two decimal places here. And 6 was just 6. So we have to move our final answer, three decimal places, one, two, and three decimal places. The decimal is right here, here. We have to move it three places. We take our decimal, move it three places, one, two, and three. Voila. The answer is 310. We said it was going to be a little more than 306. It turned out to be 310.89. 310.896, actually it's around 311, about 311. So we were off by 5. We were off by 5. So if you find one answer choice that's slightly more than 306 and one answer choice that is slightly less than 306, you have to know which way to go. You have to know whether you're underestimating or overestimating. Do you understand? Bye now.